Hello, this is the Lord's Legion and welcome to a brand new tier list, which is something that I haven't done in just over a year now. But since it does seem like the tier list trend is coming back, I thought I may as well jump back into the hype train and make yet another tier list of my own. This time in relation to all of the upcoming MCU movies that have been announced for Phase 4 and beyond, and rank them on which ones that I am personally most excited to see. And by the off chance some people may raise the questions, no I am not going to be including the new mutants or any of the Venom Venomverse movies because quite frankly they don't exist in the MCU as far as I'm concerned. Not to mention that I'm planning on doing a tier list for those movies down the road anyhow. But without further ado, let's begin with the tier list. As you can see here, this is the exact tier list for all the upcoming MCU movies that are currently in production, announced, or even heavily in development. And as you can see, I do have all of these rankings from top to bottom, they're all pretty self-explanatory, beyond pumped, really excited, kinda interested, couldn't care less, or just fuck off. That one being the only truly bad section. If you haven't noticed already, all of these movies within the Marvel Cinematic Universe are in order from the one that is gonna come out next, all the way to Captain Marvel 2, which is the last film that does have a concrete release date, and then all of the rest are either that have been announced or just heavily in development, such as Doctor Doom. But without further ado, let's just jump straight into this, starting with Black Widow, and truth be told, I really want to put it on really excited because this is a long time coming and I really wanted to see Black Widow, but on the flip side I'm starting to feel kinda interested because I do have this worry in that it might end up being nothing more than a filler movie, kinda like Ant-Man and the Wasp and how we already know Black Widow's fate at the end of Endgame, so I do feel like it's gonna lose quite a lot, at least in terms of impact, so for that reason... I'm just gonna have to pull in kinda interested for now, but we'll see how that measures up on whether I'll probably pull it back on really excited or if it's just going to remain as is. Because quite frankly, I am excited, but at the same time I'm just more anxious for Black Widow than anything else. Next we do have the Eternals, and I'm not even going to lie, I know very little of the Eternals lore, so for that reason I'm going to put it on kind of interested because that's kind of fair, it does open up plenty of possibilities in relation to the history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and kind of the origin of it so to speak and there's plenty you can do with the Eternals I imagine. On top of that it's a cosmic film so that itself does have me pretty intrigued. Up next we do have Shang-Chi and the Legends of the Ten Rings, I think that's the title, I can't remember from the back of my mind, and it's gonna sound pretty generic of me, but since I know very little of Shang-Chi and I don't really care too much about the Ten Rings, I'm just gonna put it on couldn't care less, I mean, I, I know it's a new property, but Shang-Chi as a character doesn't really appeal to me all that much, and the Ten Rings, well it is cool that the MCU are going to completely finish the plot thread of the Ten Rings that have been neglected for so long. Ultimately, I just don't really care about the Ten Rings or the Mandarin, but the only reason why I've put it on couldn't care less instead of fuck off is because at least they're just finishing a plot thread, which is the Ten Rings, so uh, it kinda warrants its existence. Aside from that really, I really couldn't care less about Shang-Chi, but who knows, maybe if they do release something down the road, like a trailer or something, it may sway my mind, but until then, that's where I'm at with Shang-Chi. On from that, we do have the MCU Spider-Man 3, and this is kind of one of those similar situations with Black Widow in that I'm kind of skeptical about it because this is kind of the last time we're going to see Spider-Man in the MCU for now, as far as I'm aware, but at the same time, the amount of stuff it's been set up as well as like with Spider-Man's identity being exposed and the prospects of like maybe we could see the Sinister Six possibly, like Scorpion or Craven the Hunter that have been heavily rumoured. I'm going to lean more towards really excited because come on, it, it's Spider-Man, it's the last of the trilogy and I do feel like if this is going to be the final MCU Spider-Man film or his last appearance within the MCU proper, then 
I feel like they might actually give us a proper send-off to Tom Holland's Spider-Man. The flip side to that, we do have for Love and Thunder, and a lot of people might hate me on this one, but I don't care because it's going on the fuck off section, because quite frankly, I don't care about for Love and Thunder, and I don't think that film should even come out at all. It does not need a fourth film, I don't care about Jane Foster being Lady Four, and on top of that, I do not like Taika Waititi's direction skills, and the more I watch for Ragnarok, I honestly dislike it even more, and like I said with Taika Waititi, I feel like his head is so far up his ass at this point that he's become a little too disrespectful. I suppose this is another rant for another day, and yeah, that's where I'm at with 4-4, it can go fuck off. On the other hand, when it comes down to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, that is going on the fuck yeah section, and I'm putting that on really excited. The only reason why it's not on Beyond Pumped is because I am slightly skeptical on how much control Sam Raimi has, but given that he is a fresh, talented filmmaker, and I'm really excited on what they're going to do with the multiverse, I mentioned Doctor Strange and Wanda teaming up against some mystical beings, like, what more can you want, really, from a Doctor Strange sequel? I'm hoping to see certain characters like Nightmare or Clear showing up, or even some obscure Doctor Strange characters within the mythos, and I'm especially keen on where they're going to take Baron Mordo next, as it does seem like he is going to be a huge mainstay for the MCU moving forward. Moving on from Doctor Strange, we do have Black Panther 2, and if anyone here knows me on this channel, Black Panther is my all-time favourite MCU film, and considering all of that, it's going on beyond pumped, because pretty much everyone is coming back, like Chadwick Boseman, he is the definitive Black Panther. I do feel like whether they're going to use Namor, Doctor Doom, or even M'Baku for the main villain, I do feel like he is going to nail the main villain, regardless of who it's going to be. So for that reason, and my personal bias towards the first film, I am really pumped to see where Black Panther will head next. And last film within the MCU that does have an upcoming release date, as of now, we do have Captain Marvel 2. At first glance, I did enjoy the first one quite a bit despite its flaws, but the more on reflection, I don't think it's really anything special, much like the Ant-Man movies. So, unless there's some really crazy stuff planned, I'm just gonna put it on couldn't care less, for now, at least, for now. Given that Captain Marvel does lean towards the cosmic side of things, I do feel like they could do something really crazy for the sequel, and a fairly bland protagonist such as Carol Danvers, like, unless she doesn't get fleshed out, I just don't see this series having much legs. The biggest head scratcher in all of this is Blade's inclusion, and the more I think about Blade, the more I feel like he might end up sharing the similar fate to that of the Inhumans, in that this one might end up being scrapped or just going to be reworked into something else entirely. But honestly, that aside, since I really love the character of Blade, I'm putting out I'm really excited. I don't know if this is actually going to see the light of day, but with that aside, I do feel like Blade could be something really special, so long as they do keep the root of the character intact and don't water it down within epic proportions. Next we do have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which I know a lot of people are really excited into seeing this movie come into fruition at some point, but me personally, I wasn't too fond of Volume 2 in the slightest, and that really annoyed me, but on the flip side, I do feel like this could be a good send-off for the Guardians if handled correctly. Gunn is a huge talent, no doubt, and I do feel like he could actually provide a good send-off for the Guardians, so with that in mind, I might put on kinda interested for now. This might change, but for now, that's kinda where I'm at with the Guardians. Even of the more cosmic side of the MCU, we do have Ant-Man 3, or but it's kind of somewhat within the cosmic realm of the MCU, but anyway, we do have Ant-Man 3. Again, this is probably an unpopular opinion, but I'm putting this in the fuck off section, because truth be told, we don't really need another Ant-Man movie. What people are probably going to think that this is outrageous, but honestly, I don't like any of the Ant-Man movies. The first one didn't do it for me, and the second one was kind of sloppy, even if it's slightly better or more memorable than the first one at least. 
And if you ask me, I think Ant-Man works a lot better as a TV character. Honestly, I do feel like I would much prefer seeing an Ant-Man Disney Plus show than another Ant-Man movie. Next, we do have another trilogy finisher in the form of Deadpool 3, and this one is also an enigma, much like Blade, because on one hand, it does seem like maybe they don't have plans for Deadpool 3 right now, but on the flip side, I do feel like they might. I, I don't even know what they're doing with Deadpool, honestly. I'm a huge fan of the first two Deadpool movies, and the fact that he is going to be implemented into the MCU somewhat and that Disney do have ownership of Deadpool, I feel like this one could go either way. This could be a make or break situation. For that reason, as much as I would really want to put it under really excited because I do love Deadpool and I do enjoy both movies quite a bit, for now, based on my skepticism, if that is even a word, I'm just going to put it on kind of interesting for now. Maybe I might pump this one up, depending on if I reflect on the list itself, but we'll have to see. Leaning more towards the previously Fox-owned characters, we do have the X-Men, and this might be yet another unpopular opinion. I do feel like they might need to rest on the X-Men for a while, because at this point, I feel like the brand's just been beaten to a pulp. The flip side to that, there are plenty of opportunities you can do with the X-Men and there are plenty of different things you could do with the IP. As to how differently they could handle the X-Men, I'm probably going to have to put it under really excited because the possibilities of what the MCU and Marvel Studios could do with the X-Men is almost endless at this point if you really think about it. At the same time, I'm more excited about Deadpool 3 than the X-Men in the MCU, so... Fuck it, I'm just gonna do that, because I'm more excited about Deadpool 3 than the X-Men in the MCU, and I do feel like they might have to backpedal with the X-Men for a bit. I do feel like putting the X-Men in the kinda interested section is a little unfair because, like I said, there are plenty of potential with the MCU's X-Men, and though for all we know, we might not have to start all the way with X-Men 1 again, but rather do solo movies featuring solo mutants like, say, Cyclops, Beast, Magneto for example, I'm just spitballing here, but let's keep the X-Men on the really excited section. Next, we do have the introduction of the MCU's Fantastic Four, and if anyone knows me, it's going straight on Beyond Pump, because this is like the one MCU movie that I've been dying to see for the longest time. I've been wanting to see the Fantastic Four done right. On top of that, I do feel like the Fantastic Four could really shake up the MCU in a positive light. I do feel like they are very instrumental, and unlike the X-Men, where I always felt like they exist within a different section of the Marvel Universe, I feel like the Fantastic Four are important. For that reason, that's why it goes up with the Beyond Pumped section. Last but certainly not least, we do have the Doctor Doom solo movie. I know some people are going to be like, oh, but the Doctor Doom movie is cancelled or it's on hold or whatever. First and foremost, we do know that Noah Hawley is not giving up on this project anytime soon. And on top of that, we have heard quite a lot of things surrounding this movie that it surely has to still be in development. And the way that Kevin Feige, Noah Hawley, and everyone within Marvel Studios keep going on about Doom, it does seem like they really want to use this character more than anything else. And so, you might see this coming from a mile off because I'm a huge Doctor Doom fan, but, you know, it's at the top of the food chain as far as I'm concerned, because, you know, it's Doctor Doom, come on now. How can I not put him any less? Yeah, I think this pretty much sums up my entire tier list from top to bottom. We have the Beyond Pumped being Doctor Doom, Black Panther 2, and Fantastic Four. In the Really Excited, we have Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Spider-Man 3, Blade, Pool 3, and the MCU's introduction of the X-Men. The kind of interested section, we do have Black Widow, Eternals, and Guardians Volume 3. They're kind of more of the ones that I'm skeptical about somewhat. And then we have the Clun KLS section, including Shang-Chi and the Legends of the Ten Rings, as well as Captain Marvel 2. I could live without these movies personally, but I do know that 
they could be some sort of potential or they might have some fan base that really want those films. Last but certainly not least, we do have the fuck off section for both for Love and Thunder as well as Ant-Man 3. Personally, fuck 4-4 and fuck Ant-Man 3. I don't want to see those movies. They can go burn. Do you remotely agree with anything within my personal tier list of the upcoming MCU films for Phase 4 and beyond, and what changes would you personally do? Below and share some thoughts, and don't forget if you really want to show me your own personal tier list, then you can check the link in the description as well as the pinned comment, and then you can make your own tier list out of my layout. And as always, thank you guys for watching this video, please like and subscribe, Take care and have a good one.